our journey to understand the fundamental concepts of external force convection takes us first to the canonical flat plate problem. From an engineering standpoint, force convection over a flat plate provides the foundation for understanding heat transfer applications such as electronic schooling and metallurgy. In this lesson, we will learn about the fundamental concepts governing heat transfer over a flat plate. The fluid flow over an infinitely long flat plate is categorized depending on the flow behavior as laminar, transitional and turbulent. A boundary layer is formed at the leading edge of the flat plate and the flow near this leading edge is smooth and highly ordered. This is the laminar region where the Reynolds number based on the length of the plate is lower than approximately 3.5 into 10 to the power 5. As the fluid flows further downstream away from the leading edge, the flow becomes unsteady due to small disturbances in the boundary layer, sometimes exhibiting laminar characteristics and other times turbulent. This region is often referred to as the transitional region and the characteristic Reynolds number ranges between 3.5 into 10 to the power 5 to approximately 3 into 10 to the power 6. Further downstream, the fluid is characterized by highly random motion dominated by chaotic flow mixing and this is the turbulent region. Identifying these flow regimes is an important aspect of understanding convective heat transfer over a flat plate. And we will first look into the laminar flow before venturing into the turbulent flow regime. We will also investigate two thermal conditions for a heated flat plate, a constant wall temperature, and a constant heat flux. For a laminar flow over a flat plate, the velocity boundary layer solution is obtained using a similarity analysis, popularly known as the Blasius solution. The governing equations are transformed into ordinary differential equations using similarity variables eta and f of eta, so we can obtain a relationship for the boundary layer thickness. A thermal boundary layer is created when a fluid flows over a heated flat plate. In this case, the plate temperature is held constant at Ts. To obtain the heat transfer solution, we take the energy equation into account. First, we define the dimensionless temperature T star, which is also a function of eta, in terms of both surface temperature Ts and free stream temperature T infinity. Following the same similarity approach, we rewrite the boundary layer energy equation into the following ODE. For laminar flows, it is important to note that the thermal boundary layer solution is dependent on the Prandtl number. We need the following two boundary conditions to solve this ODE. Let us first consider fluids with Prandtl numbers greater than 0.6. Paul Hausen correlated the first derivative of T star at eta equal to zero using the following relationship, which is used to determine the boundary layer thickness. When this is compared to the hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness for a laminar flow, we obtain the following ratio. If the fluid product number is high, the hydrodynamic boundary layer is thicker than the thermal boundary layer. The local heat transfer coefficient is expressed in terms of the first derivative of temperature at eta equal to zero and the following relationship is obtained. Rewriting this in terms of the Nusselt number, we obtain the following relationship for fluids with Prandtl number greater than or equal to 0.6. This relationship is a function of x and is dependent on the length of the plate. Assuming that we know the length of the laminar boundary layer region x, we can integrate the local heat transfer coefficient along the plate to obtain the average value. It is observed that the average heat transfer coefficient is exactly twice the local heat transfer coefficient at any given length of the plate x. Similarly, an average Nusselt number over a specified length l is twice the local Nusselt number 
at a specific location L. Now, for low prandelic number fluids such as liquid metals, the thermal boundary layer is much thicker than the hydrodynamic boundary layer. And because of this, we can assume a uniform velocity u equal to v infinity throughout the thermal boundary layer. Using this condition and solving the appropriate ODE, we obtain the following solution to the first derivative of T star. This translates into the following local Nusselt number relationship. For low Prandtl number fluids, the Nusselt number is proportional to the square root of Prandtl number. Whereas for high Prandtl number fluids, it goes as one third power of the Prandtl number. In the case of turbulent flow regime, the heat is transported across the boundary layer by random chaotic motion of turbulent eddies and not by molecular diffusion of heat. Because of this, the thermal boundary layer growth is independent of the Prandtl number of the fluid and its thickness is comparable to that of the velocity layer. The thermal and hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness for a turbulent flow over a flat plate is given by the following expression. When compared to the laminar flows, it is observed that the boundary layer growth in turbulent flows is faster. One major difference between laminar and turbulent flow analysis is that we cannot use a similarity approach and have to rely on experiments to obtain the local friction coefficient along the plate. This is given by the following relationship. This relationship is used by the chiltern colburn analogy to obtain the local Nusselt number for turbulent flows along the flat plate. Between the laminar and turbulent flow regimes, there is a region of transition. If this transition occurs much downstream of the plate closer to the trailing edge, we can rely on the laminar boundary layer correlations to predict the heat transfer. However, if the transition region occurs much closer to the leading edge, the heat transfer is affected by both laminar and turbulent boundary layers. In such cases, where the flow transition occurs at length x c, we can calculate an average heat transfer coefficient over the entire length of the plate using the following relationship. Here, the laminar region is between 0 and xc and the turbulent region is between xc and L. Substituting both laminar and turbulent heat transfer coefficients, we obtain the following equation. Here, A is a constant based on the critical Reynolds number. Until now, we've discussed convection heat transfer coefficient relations for flow over an isothermal flat plate. Now, let us learn about a different condition when an applied wall heat flux is known. This condition is useful for electronics cooling where constant thermal power is generated by the electronics. Another application is cooling hot metal or steel. In such applications, the wall temperature distribution becomes the variable of interest. The local Nusselt number relationships for laminar and turbulent flow over a flat plate with constant heat flux Q double dash S are as follows. When these are compared with isothermal relationships, it is observed that the Nusselt number is 36% higher for constant heat flux condition in the case of a laminar flow. For a turbulent flow, it is only 4% higher when a constant heat flux condition is applied. The obtained heat transfer coefficients are used to estimate the local wall temperature distribution of the flat plate using the following expression. With that, let's wrap up this lesson.